So use your first experiences well. They will serve you well. Gracious professionals tend to be satisfied, happy people. Gracious professionalism has been around a long time. It's a direct reflection of first and its ideology to create and disseminate a culture of science and technology leaders. It's a major belief in the first community and has been an axiom of first for well over two decades. Yet, despite it being so prevalent and accepted within first, there's no clear, concise definition. While anecdotes and analogies are readily given as examples to embody what gracious professionalism is, it's more of an overall philosophy that is best learned over time through the first experience. If you were to go to FIRST's website and navigate to the About tab and click on Vision and Mission, you'd get the closest definition of gracious professionalism out there. Within the first four paragraphs to explain the practice is one sentence that stands out. It's a way of doing things that encourages high quality work, emphasizes the value of others, and respects individuals and the community. This idea is furthered when gracious professionalism is described as part of pursuing a meaningful life, acting with integrity and sensitivity. But is this what gracious professionalism has always been, or what it has evolved into? We're going to be looking into the history of the term and try to uncover the best understanding of it possible. The origin of these eight syllables aren't concrete. The phrase gracious professionalism, or its initials GP, had been making rounds within the first community as early as 2000. It was used by Dr. Woody Flowers at the opening of Nationals at Epcot that year. And you can really get a sense of its oral history looking back to 2002 where GP was popularly described as acting in a way that your grandmother would be proud of. That year, uh, 2002, was marked with somewhat of a controversy as the physical nature of the game brought out new strategies and a debate regarding gracious professionalism as either compatible or incompatible with aggressive gameplay. Most people would refer back to their first SME cards where front and center was the first code of ethics. Gracious professionalism, described as respect, courtesy, good sportsmanship, and best behavior at all times. Still, there was disagreement over if aggressive strategies, albeit within the realm of the rules, were truly representative of GP. On the flip side, some teams using the aggressive but legal strategies were met with hostility, usually perpetrated by rookie teams, not fully understanding what gracious professionalism encompassed. But of course, gracious professionalism was just getting started. Chief Delphi, a uh, first form, was the main facilitator of such topics with threads entitled, What is Gracious Professionalism Really? What is Gracious Professionalism to You? Or Early Gracious Professionalism, uh, how GP was originally introduced. This kind of shows that up until that point around 2003-2004, Gracious Professionalism was a shared notion around the first community, generally agreed upon but not always. In 2004, FIRST actually patented the method for creating cooperation and gracious professionalism, and so from then on, gracious professionalism was always followed by a trademark symbol on any FIRST property, and later it would become a registered trademark. Gracious professionalism has the sort of reputation of being like Bigfoot or UFOs. There's a lot of stories, but no authenticated photos or video to serve as proof to the rumors. And while it may seem most every team has multiple good tales to tell of GP, its presence is undisputable. 
A team is honored with the Gracious Professionalism Award at each regional competition across the globe. It's such an ingrained character trait of FIRST. It really represents everything that FIRST as an organization stands for. GP may not sound profound or impressive in 2017, after all it could be argued that it's just common sense, but in many ways it still is unique, especially when looking back on the context of it in history. As one Chief Delphi user described it in 2004, it becomes pretty obvious during brainstorming when a lot of newcomers want to design robots that flip intentionally and add spears and saws to damage other robots. When they hear about GP, I really get the funny looks, and it takes a week or two for the concept to start to sink in. It isn't until the first regional that the GP light finally goes on in full brilliance though, and then there is no holding back. As opposed to other competitive robotic organizations, FIRST's aim is to comfortably blend knowledge, competition, and empathy. And while it does a tremendous job preparing the youth for the real-world business setting, it also helps foster something much more important, good people. In some cases, FIRST alumni are met with a dose of reality and set back with how jaded, profit-oriented, and sometimes even dishonest life in the real-world industry can be. However, the seed that is GP, that was nourished in FIRST, doesn't just disappear after students graduate. FIRST has taught them to overcome adversity, problem-solve, and have gracious professionalism when doing so. In this light, First is accomplishing its mission, to inspire and change culture. To change culture not only with STEM leaders or STEM role models, but to improve the culture of the workplace as well, using gracious professionalism. And so, we look around today at what GP has become, the ethos of FIRST, a philosophy widespread throughout this organization fostering STEM. Gracious professionalism is not simply a thing, but a habit, a way of conducting oneself. GP is the tool to achieve the main goal of FIRST, to change society for the better. The vision of FIRST is to create a world where science and technology heroes are as revered as sports stars. This goal has been greatly helped along with the introduction of gracious professionalism. It is changing the way teenagers think about themselves, life, and others. <laughs>